Hello, and this is how to improve your painting with this quick tonal value exercise. Now this is great with beginners because it really helps you understand tones and values in a painting, but just with a single colour. So it's a little bit more straightforward than using lots of different colours and it takes a little bit of the choice out of it. So I hope you enjoy the, uh, the tutorial, there'll be a link below in the description so you can download the image from my website and we can have a sketch along together. So as you can see we've got uh, some, it's quite a high contrast quite a high contrast uh, picture this. Like most snow scenes you've got a lot of white uh, and as these get further back they obviously get smaller and we'll just bridge those there like that. So that's kind of like that bit done in terms of the line work. I'm going to put in this fence just as a real rough line like that and then Quickly sketching this gable. And this is going to be quite dark, I think, overall, because there is. It looks like a sort of American style barn, this. And that comes down to above the roof line there. And the barn in this is actually probably a little bit bigger in my drawing than in the main image, but. I don't mind that. And then we've got some more posts here. And again, the perspective a bit further away, so there won't be quite as much perspective in them. And then we've got all these tree details. Now I'm not going to put in a lot of those tree details. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in lightly some of the trunks. And then I'm going to use actually some um, paint to fill in those sort of fuzzy fuzzy branch details there. Right, I'm gonna actually go in with a, a pen and I'm gonna put in those line details. So for this, I'm gonna use my Opus 88 fountain pen, which is one of my favorites. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the foreground detail. So actually, I think uh, what's gonna stand out most in the foreground here is gonna be this barbed wire fence. So let's put that in. So that is a series of dots, and as you get close to the camera, they get further apart. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a couple of little crosses on there, just to try and make it look like a barbed wire fence. And this is quite tricky in terms of uh, composition in a way, because what you've got here is some very dark areas and some very light areas. Okay, and then this is going to be here. And it's going to be much closer together. We don't even have to do a, a cross. We could just do a dot on these ones because they're a bit further back. And uh, then we'll just go with one on these, I think. And then here, here, and then these get much closer in, and we'll just do some real simple lines there, like that. Right. So I'm going to not put that post in there, I'm going to leave that out. So then when it comes to this wall detail in the foreground here, um, some of this is a tiny bit confusing and it doesn't necessarily read as wall. So I'm going to add in a few extra bits. I'm going to draw in the top of these snow mounds and then I'm going to draw in a few little cheaty extra bits of wall. So. Now the reason why I'm doing that is just to help the story along a little bit. Now you don't have to do that by any means. I think it also helps to show that, you know, the drawing is yours. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, and then we're gonna put in some, um, a little bit of foliage in there. 
Now to do that, I'm probably going to use another pen actually. And what I might use is with my food fountain pens. Now, if you don't have one of these, don't worry, you could just go in heavy with your uh, normal fountain pen. But these are nice, they just give a slightly more irregular shape. And then obviously on these you've got some little dots. Again, I'm being a little bit sort of abbreviating some of these. And then as you get further back, these get a little bit smaller. And at the bottom of these, there's a, t a few tiny little um, bits and bobs. Right, so I'll leave that there and then So a bit further back, we do have some darker areas, but this wall is being a little bit covered there, and then we're into the horizon. So, so then we have a fence here. Now what I'm going to do with this fence is I'm just going to go colour it in with the black. We're going to just assume that there's no, there we go. And then we're going to really quickly just block in that roof. And there's the chimney. Add in a few details here just to try and tell the story a bit. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave that there as negative space so that we can we can add those in after and then we've just got here these little posts coming there and then coming out of here we've got all those trees so in terms of those branches we can put in some of this detail. I'm using again the back of the of the pen here. What I'm trying to do is make a suggestion of foliage back here. There's a big tree here. So that's going in. And then same here. Uh, there is a, a bit of a tree there as well. And then we've got a gap and then over here there is another tree. There we go, so that kind of fleshes that out a little bit. Okay, so what I can do now is add in a few of these little bits here. Now what are these going to do is they're going to really read. Putting a little line there. Just, I'm going to put in a line there so I can, as a point of reference. Okay, and then there is a couple of little bits of grass poking through here. Obviously what I've done here is I've I've looked at the overall image and I know that the sky is the first value of dark as well as some areas of shadow through here. And um, the next layer is going to be the trees and then the next value of dark is all the shadows. So I've got three tonal values. So it's going to go... Um, Snow shadows, sky, trees, dark, dark shadows. So for this demo, the first thing I'm going to do is rub out all my pencil lines. And then I'm going to use a Daniel Smith uh, paint called Moon Glow. Now Moon Glow is a kind of mixture of a few different paints. 
um, so it tends to separate up into its sort of separate colours. It's got blues and pinks and all sorts of different stuff in it, but you could use any colour for this, literally any colour. You could use inks, you could do whatever. So my first port of call. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of a light, a light wash of this moon glow colour. And then I'm going to apply the first shadow detail. Now what that is, is the overall sky. Now it's quite a flat sky here. And actually, as soon as I'm doing the sky, I really probably should mix up a little bit more. So let's do that. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more of this moon glow. All right. Now anybody who watches me regularly knows that I don't tend to be too precious about my skies. I like them to be quite free and a little bit sort of expressive. And this moon glow is actually quite a nice colour for a stormy winter sky. Now you could add some clouds into this by simply dropping in a little bit of clean water and that would that would sort of split it up a little bit. Um, now I can actually demonstrate that, so let's just dab a bit of that clean water and then we're going to just drop it on there. And then when that dries you should be able to see how that's worked. I might even do the same here. It creates these nice, uh, these nice little effects. Oops, wrong brush. I don't want it to be too round, so I'm just going to drab that water, drag it across there a bit. There we go. Okay, so then that's the sky. Now I need to put in some sort of slight shadow details. So I'm going to go in here, do that. There's a few lines here. There. And then what we have here is the detail on this snow. Now there seems to be a bit of a shadow behind these lumps. But it's important to show the shadow on the snow because otherwise you won't really read it properly as snow. So I'm going to go in and put in So again, this is tonal value study. So what we're doing here is we are looking at the the values of the light and dark in the image, but keeping it super simple so that we don't actually have to make a lot of decisions about color. We can just actually think of it as light and dark rather than different shadows or um, different colors and different shadow colors. So obviously we've got quite a lot going on in the snow here, at the bottom of these. And if you look, there's probably some dots and detail there. And I'm going to put a few splashes in there. And then with the tissue, I'm just going to pull that out of that bit of snow there. Okay. So that's some sky happening. Obviously, um, we've got some of this nice cloud detail happening. I can make that cloud a bit bigger by just dabbing a bit out with the tissue. And you can see with this moon glow is you do get some nice different tones and colours. We've done a little bit of snow in the foreground. We could put a little bit of the bottom of those things there. There we go. And as we get further back, it just becomes a bit more abstract. So I think what I need to do is just quickly dry this before we go in and do the trees. Now, obviously, if you're doing a you know, a really detailed version of this drawing or something quite sophisticated. Um, or about that number three. You can go and do many, many different layers of tones and values in this, but I'm trying to keep this simple and just keep it as like three layers. So the first layer is done, all one value. Then the next layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix, mix a slightly uh, more concentrated version of this moon glow. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my uh, trusty mop brush here. But what I might do is I might break this up a bit, like this. 
Now that's not going to be dark enough. So let's go in and make that a little bit darker, a little bit richer. Mixing, mixing, mixing. And again, I'm going to push that down, break that up there. Just to get some nice sort of irregular shapes. Here. No. Careful not to go onto the... Uh, the roof there, I could go back in and add in some details. Again, I'm not going to be too precious about this tree detail here. I'm just punching at this. It's going to be a bit expressive, so... Put in some verticals. Now, you may see there I've got a little bit on that roof, but I really don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet the brush and I'm gonna go in, wet that, and then I'm gonna press the tissue on it there and just suck a little bit of that off. Okay. So I wanna create a little bit of a defined shape around the barn here. So I'm gonna get a reasonably dry brush and just run that through. a little bit of shadow behind there, pull that up a bit. Okay, so I mean, what I could do there as well is, if you want to put a bit more suggestion of leaves and things in there, you can add some dots. And when that, now that's still wet, the dots that are within there will sort of disappear if you don't want them. You can dot them out in areas where you don't want those dots to be. And you can also basically choose areas you want that by holding masking off. I'm gonna put some there and then along there. There we go. So now I've done the trees, which is the second layer of uh, shadow, what I can do is I can start thinking about some of these layers here. So I'm going to take this opportunity of putting another slightly darker shadow profile in this one here. And then adding the full shadow down here where you're going to see that with that wall and then there's going to be some back here too because there's little sections of the wall that you can see back there and there we go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry that and then we do our last layer actually no I'll tell you what I'm going to do I think this is a bit blank, this area here. So what I'm going to do is just do a bit of a dilute and I'm going to drag some paint across this field. Just to give a suggestion of some shadow areas. I might do something that way as well. There we go. Okay, so I'm dry that and then do the last bit. Is if I have one more dark layer, is it going to be dark enough for the barn? Is it going to be dark enough for the post? Or do I just end up going back in with fountain pen? Well, let's see. Let's do the ultimate dark layer of moon glow and see, see how dark we can get it. I don't think the... Uh, I don't think that brush is probably, the mop brush is probably better for this. I want to do some detail, so I'm going to use something a little bit finer. And that's a big thick rigger. Okay, let's have a go with that one. So. So that's just some extra shadows here on the... on that wall and then these posts obviously now there was some snow on the back of those posts but I honestly think that's going to be a little bit 
harder to do in this demo. So I'm just going to keep it super simple. There we go. And then we've got some posts here. Oops. No. I need to start at this side. And then as the pen runs out, sorry, the paint runs out, gets thinner and thinner. There we go. And then I can think about putting in some more of these details here. Sort of doubling down on a few of these, these lines. That I put in originally with the fountain pen. You can see this brush is capable of some quite fine, fine brush strokes. And then the same at this side. Do some more if I need dry off super. There we go. So that's that. Now what I want to do now is go in with this barn and just block out this. And that's going to be really dark just because it is one of the darkest bits of the image. It doesn't matter if that looks super dark. Here we go. And then this bit up here. There we go. Okay. Okay, well that's probably not far off then, I think. Right, one more dry and then I think we'll just do a few more details with the fountain pen. So there you can see, that's a pretty straightforward little, um, pretty straightforward little drawing and you can go back in with the pen and you could add on some more details of the barn if you wanted. There's some black there. Um, so there's a door there or whatever. You could also add in some extra stuff here for this wall or whatever. So in this simple tutorial, you have three color values. You have this shadow detail, shadow detail and the sky. And then you have another layer in, which is just these trees. And then you have a third layer in, which is the barn and the wall. Now you've also got obviously the line work, which is an even darker layer. So you could argue that there's four layers there, but the point of this tutorial is not to show you how to draw the perfect winter scene. That's not what I'm doing here, but I'm just trying to show you that it's all about values. So an image like this, it splits up into four values. So I hope you find that simple and I hope you like this little winter scene here. I hope you enjoyed that. I mean, this exercise is good for beginners or advanced artists because it always is nice to have a reminder of just how using simple values can help you express form, shape and textures and things like that. So please uh, like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. I have some paintings for sale on my website. There's a link below for that. And you could buy me a coffee uh, and pop back next time for another tutorial. Well, thank you for joining me today. And if you're ever passing, pop in for a cup of tea. Thanks, bye.